He wanted to join the Marines, but he was too short, only five foot six. The paratroopers wouldn't have him either. Reluctantly, he settled on the infantry, enlisting to become the most decorated hero of World War II. He was Audie Murphy, the baby-faced Texas farm boy who became an American legend. Murphy grew up on a sharecropper's farm in Hunt County, Texas. Left at a very young age to help raise ten brothers and sisters when his father deserted their mother. Audie was only 16 when his mother died. He watched as his brothers and sisters were doled out to orphanages or to relatives. War had just been declared, and like so many other young men, Murphy lied about his age in his attempt to enlist. But it was not his age that kept him out of the Marines. It was his size. Not tall enough to meet the minimum requirements, he tried to enlist in the paratroopers, but again was denied entrance. Despondent, he chose the infantry. Following basic training, Murphy was assigned to the 15th Regiment, 3rd Infantry Division in North Africa, preparing to invade Sicily. Shortly thereafter, his unit was withdrawn from Italy to train for Operation Anvil Dragoon, the invasion of southern France. During seven weeks of fighting in that successful campaign, Murphy's division suffered 4,500 casualties, and he became one of the most decorated men in his company. But his biggest test was yet to come. Near the village of Holzver in eastern France, Lieutenant Murphy's forward positions came under fierce attack by Germans. Against the onslaught of six panzer tanks and 200 infantrymen, Murphy ordered his men to fall back to better their defenses. Alone, he mounted an abandoned tank destroyer and, with a single machine gun, halted the enemy's advance. Wounded in the leg during the heavy fire, Murphy remained there for nearly an hour, repelling the attack of German soldiers on three sides and single-handedly killing 50 of them. His courageous performance stalled the German advance and allowed him to lead his men in a counterattack that ultimately drove the enemy from Holzfer. For this, Murphy was awarded the Medal of Honor, the nation's highest award for gallantry in action. By the war's end, Murphy had become the nation's most decorated soldier, earning an unparalleled 28 medals. Audie Murphy returned to a hero's welcome in the United States. His photograph appeared on the cover of Life magazine. He was persuaded by the actor James Cagney to embark on an acting career. Still very shy and unassuming, Murphy arrived in Hollywood with only his good looks and, by his own account, no talent. The following year, he published his wartime memoirs, To Hell and Back, which received good reviews. Later, he portrayed himself in the 1955 movie version of the book. Many film critics, however, believe his best performance was in The Red Badge of Courage. The Red Badge of Courage is an essay in pure bravery. The story of a raw young recruit who overnight becomes a man through a baptism of fire. Such is the boy played by Audie Murphy. Jim. Yeah? How do you think the regiment will do? Oh, they'll fight all right once they get into it. We'll be on them like wildcats. They won't know what hit them. Think any of the boys will run? There may be a few of them run, but there's them kind in every regiment. Especially when they first goes under fire. Yesterday, when things started getting hot, I... I was mighty scared. We all was. Yeah. But I lit out. You mean you ran away, Henry? 
It earned him respect in Hollywood and a new wife, actress Wanda Hendricks, who called it quits after one year when, in a flashback, Audie held her at gunpoint. Audie Murphy was probably the most famous man to ever live in Menifee, the most decorated World War II veteran, and most decorated soldier in the history of the U.S. military. He purchased a horse ranch in Menifee in the 1950s. This time around he had better luck when he married Pamela Archer and had two sons, Terry and Skip. The ranch brought him back to his days in Texas. He raised quarter horses, many were top thoroughbreds, and he enjoyed racing them, including his favorite horse, Joe Queen. His ranch is now a subdivision and spans nearly 200 acres. Combat does this. It intensifies all a man's faculties, dramatizes and exaggerates his strengths and his weaknesses. Under heavy fire in combat, a man's true nature is stripped naked for all to see. In combat, there are really two battles going on at the same time. A war within a war, so to speak. There is the external battle, war with the enemy. There's the personal war, sometimes even more deadly, that each man has inside himself. In other news, Audie Murphy, the most decorated man of World War II, who went on to become a movie star, was found dead this afternoon in the wreckage of a light plane in the hills of Virginia. The plane went down on Friday afternoon near the top of a mountain. The wreckage was located from the air this morning, and rescue teams reached the scene late this afternoon, but all six men on board were dead. Audie Murphy is buried in Arlington National Cemetery. His is the second most visited gravesite in Arlington, only behind that of President John F. Kennedy. A special flagstone walkway has been constructed to accommodate the large number of people who stopped to pay the respects to this hero. At the end of a row of graves, his tomb is marked by a simple, white, government-issue tombstone which lists only a few of his many military decorations. The stone is, as he was, too small. I encourage you to sign the petition asking that Audie Murphy be posthumously awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom for his heroism and work in advocating treatment for veterans with PTSD. You'll find the petition at www.audiemurphy.com dot com